very good. I originally saw this idea in one of the homesteading magazines. And I thought the, uh, our sassafras was a um, good candidate to try. So we made up the round pole trusses and we did it all with green unseasoned timber. And then we sort of went on with other things and we forgot about them. And they've been lying down in the grass near the sawmill for a couple of years. And uh, we've got this project on now, we thought uh, it was time to get them out, clean them off. So now the bark's all fallen off them, we just clean them up. And they seem to have uh, handled our uh, quality assurance test pretty well down there actually. Yeah, they've been sitting outside for a couple of years now and haven't rotted away to nothing yet. No. But um, I quite like actually there's been some sort of grub in under the bark. It's done a bit of minimal damage, but they sort of leave a pattern there that's reminiscent of Indonesian wood carving. So, um, yeah, so um, I think we'll clean them up and wire brush them and probably oil them with some raw linseed oil or something. And uh, they'll look very rustic. And once we get them under a roof, <coughs> I can't really see that they won't last for years and years and years. Right, yo. Here we are with our DIY woodshed kit that we've been putting together. We've got the old um, roundwood sassafras trusses that we've been fixing up. And um, yeah, we dug a few holes this morning to put the tallow wood posts in. It's been going pretty good so far. Had a few little issues with some six inch nails, a couple of casualties. So yeah, what's the plan with getting the roof on? You're going to throw it up there, Tom. Huh? Yep, I think that's a good idea. The, uh, How are we going to keep it all square? Well, the plan is um, the most uniform thing in the whole building is going to be the roofing iron and you have to be able to end up have nice flat battens and keep it all square and true so the sheets go on square and the um what i always liked about the this whole idea of these round wood trusses is that they're built on top of each other and it's the it's the outside um the outline of each each truss has they're all the same so that gives you some sort of um, dimensional uniformity so we can lay battens across them Maybe you have to just flatten a little spot on each one to get a bat and across it nice and true. Um, but we've built the, we've got all the, all the poles in the ground and we leveled them all with the water level. Um, so we've got them all cut in the same length. Yep. We know that our distance between the top of them uh, from, the, from the plan needs to be 2.4 metres. So I've got that 4 by 2 that we cut off the sawmill there a little while ago and uh, I've drilled it, pre-drilled it through at 2.4 metres and then sort of nailed it to the top centres of the two uprights so that gets our spread there and then we do the same on the other side and then we can use the nail heads basically as our datum point and we'll measure them up uh, for squareness, measure the diagonals get the whole thing square and we haven't cemented the posts in yet so we can actually fudge the posts around a bit in the ground get them so they're looking reasonably upright but most importantly that those uh, top dimensions are, are all square and true and then we'll um, cement them in the ground at that and in theory 
and remembering that in theory, theory and practice are the same, but in practice they're not. Exactly. The, uh, we should end up with a nice uh, true uniform top that we put our iron on and the bottom basically completes itself. We yeah, can fudge the poles in and out on the holes. And just, that sounds like a good plan. As long as they sort of look right. So we've had, had a bit of a change in weather. Storm blew in the other night. It's been raining the last couple of days. We persevered, putting the posts in, lining it up square. Just put in some temporary steel brackets to hold it together. Now we're just digging out around the posts a bit more to put in some concrete using rapid set so we'll work into a clock and we'll see how we go Just like bacon biscuits. <laughs> you gotta get that consistency right. A little bit of soda water will make them nice and fluffy. Yeah. It's all about folding in the butter. You gotta fold in the butter. Tramping it in, down in the hole, forming a plug on top. And we need a moderate amount of concrete. It's three quarters of an inch, uh, sorry, it's a quarter of an inch under 15 feet. Right, yeah. Quarter of an inch short of 15 feet. Now we'll check the other one. They were an inch out the other day when I missed Yep. So now we'll do this one. Yeah, 15 and 3 quarters. Mm hmm. So we'll measure it the other way now. Perfect. We knew. I thought that um, that was a number we hadn't touched before, and it might just be the midpoint. Yep. That works out.
we'll know we've done it right time. When a big howl and southerly buster comes down there and it blows the whole thing away, just doesn't tear it in half. <laughs> it'll be um, it'll be gone, but it'll be intact. Yeah, that's the goal. As good as you can hope for. Cool, so we've got our beams attached to the uprights. Yeah. Now we're just figuring out how we're going to get these trusses up. What do you reckon? Well, the plan calls for... We've got three trusses. We've got a truss over the top of that. And a truss over the top of there. These beams are still going to be trimmed to length according to the plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the other truss goes in the middle. Um, I'm going to get up there and mark the centre line on each side. Then I reckon if we get a truss, sit one end up on there, sit the other end up on the other side, and it'll sort of hang down upside down, but it should stay in there, not very heavy enough, you can spread the poles. And then uh, we'll swing it round, stand it up straight. Uh, we'll probably just eyeball it for vertical, and maybe uh, pull one of these trusses in here and let it lean up against that. Yep. And we'll spike it with the six inch nails, pre-drill it and spike it to the top of that. Uh -huh. uh, get it so it looks straight, then we'll probably use some more strap to hold it to there. And, and they're going to have like purlins going across the top of them to hold them together? Yeah, and then uh, we can use, then we put one on either end and we can use that those temporary braces I, I had there to hold them together at vertical. At, so they're all vertical. Yep. And then um, we can put, got to put the battens across to hold the iron. But that'll be the plan. Put the middle one up first, then put either end up one. Cool. We'll get into it. Yep. Right, yeah, we've got it up. Something done look right, mate. Yeah, it's um, it looks a little upside down, doesn't it? It's going to run the water to the middle. Mm-hmm. I'll push it up around to me, or I could just do that. Yeah. Now, we'll move it out of the road and I'll pre-drill the Say. Yeah, it looks alright. I do. There we have it guys, we've got the trusses up on top and it's looking pretty good. Probably going to leave it there for this video. It'll be a two-parter. In the next part we'll be putting the battens on and um, the roofing iron and um, probably work on some other features for the woodshed too. Have um, some garden beds around the side and a trellis up the walls for some passion fruit and stuff to grow so it should look good anyway check you next time cheers